Hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss about selling skills in an agile world, part one. What kinds of customers do I sell to? As it's almost a cardinal rule by now that salespeople should ask customers questions. For without questions, we could almost be unable to find out what specific needs customers have, and hence would not be able to propose solutions that feed those needs. This part is logical and is easy to understand. What's not as easy are issues such as, what questions should I ask? What if customers don't answer? How will the customers' answers help me understand their deeper needs, etc.? Throughout many sales training materials, here are some of the more common questioning techniques that were being taught: open versus closed questions, pain versus implications, or what will happen if nothing is done type of questions. Questions about whom the decision makers and other key influences should be or could be. The challenges in getting salespeople up to speed when it comes to asking questions are that we end up making a list of questions that may not get to what's important at the moment. We may ask the right questions at the wrong time, or while we may have a bunch of questions to work on, we lack a coherent questioning strategy to map out what should be or could be the optimal next question. So here are some tips on how we could make our questions more effective, and that our customers feel more comfortable answering. And this is how buyers buy. If you are able to map your questions to match the different phases of how buyers make their purchases, you might just get a better response. Well, there are many studies about what buying stages the typical customer goes through. Here's one model that I like. At the beginning of stage one, customers might have a need they need to fulfill or a goal they would like to achieve. Once the customer is clear about what needs they have and how they are going to fulfill those needs, they go into stage two, which is all about comparing the different viable options. And finally, at stage three, that is when customers are re- ready to make the purchase. There are four aspects customers will need to consider during these three buying stages. The first is about the pains and goals. Pains can be needs that are not fulfilled, and then the budget. How how much budget do they plan to address the above pains and goals? There could be the options, as in what to choose from, as well as the risk, the risk of buying from you if if need be. At stage one. When customers don't have clear needs or goals when you approach them, the conversation may revolve around what could be a future need or goal, so that the need could be created. At an early stage, customers may also be concerned about budget, although they may be looking more at ballpark figures rather than price bargaining at this stage. At stage two, customers like to compare between different options. You may want to give two to three different options for customers to compare, rather than just bombarding them about how good your features are for your products and solutions. At stage three, that's when customers haggle prices. More importantly, they will now weigh in the risk factors such as what if. There are hidden costs that they don't know yet. What if it fails or does not work as promised? What if the after-sales service is not timely enough? If customers perceive that the risk of buying is higher than the value and benefits of your products and solutions, they will not buy. Many buyers made the mistake of merely dropping price at stage three, rather than finding out how to help customers reduce their perceived risks of buying from you. Next, we go on to how to qualify customers. 
On the other hand, as salespeople, we also have sets of criteria when qualifying or prioritizing our customers. Qualifying is important because you want to spend time on good customers and not spend time or waste time on customers that don't fit. You want to prioritize your limited time and resources on the larger number of potential customers and sales opportunities that you may have. Typically, you may want to qualify customers according to the following prioritized criteria. Number one, can you uncover needs and goals that align with the strengths of what you are providing? Typically, customers don't need your products or even your solutions. They would just like to either achieve or improve their results or resolve or avoid some problems. The needs and goals are the distance between where they are and where they want to be. Or what are some of the negative consequences if nothing is done or they do nothing about it? Number two, do they have the right budget and are they willing to pay your acceptable payment terms or prices? Is the expected revenue worth your time and resources uh, to commit in? Would you have acceptable gross margins if you were to go through with the business? Number three, do they have a trusting relationship with you? Would they be willing to introduce you to all key influencers? Could their key influencers accept new ideas and are less resistant? Are they willing to share information with you, including dates of new projects? If they did not buy from you, would they be candid about the specific reasons? And finally, number four, would they have greater potential for future business? Would they have long-term business value for you? Or if they buy from you this year, would they buy more next year? Would they be good reference value for future new projects with new customers? If the customer fulfills the top three criteria, they will be great customers. And if you pr probably could commit as much time and resources to follow through with that customer, even if this customer might not really have strong potential for future businesses. If the customer fulfills all four criteria, they will be ideal customers, and ideal customers are hard to come by. The reason that the potential for future business is placed as a last criteria is that you, if you could not meet your sales targets this year, you may not be around to pursue future sales opportunities next year. This is not to say longer-term potential of opportunities are not important, but the salesperson will need to balance time and resources committed for short-term and long-term sales opportunities. If a customer has a need as well as the right budget but not the, the right desired level of relationship, you could still follow and seek to develop trust and relationship with the customer. If the customer has a need and have a great relationship with you but not the required budget, you could explore if it's possible to provide a smaller solution at a smaller budget or if there are payment options that fit their needs. If you have good relationship with the customer and they have lots of budget but not a clear need, well, you may want to think about spending more time with them and explore if you could create a need well that will take some time it's not something that you can do immediately it's just a thought that you may want to go trying if neither of these options are available you could keep in touch with the customer without committing much time and resources until they have the budget or the need or take the time to build great relationships in fact, if all your prospects and customers seem not to have any of the needs and goals, budgets, relationship, or potential, then perhaps you may want to 
focus on uncovering the needs of those customers. For without needs, customers are unlikely to buy. If they have some real needs, then they might farm fine the budget, and from then on develop trusting relationships with you.